I've always been a bird lover, bird watcher, you know, since a kid, mm -hmm. uh, growing up in the country, and it was kind of my pastime, and uh, I didn't really know much about the piping plover until I went to school up at Lake Superior State University, mm -hmm. and for the last several years they've been hiring students to um, be plover monitors at various sites in the UP. This is actually my, my third season as a monitor. Um, my first two seasons I was in St. Ignace, and I'm here now, and it's, it's great. My first two seasons I only had uh, one nest to look, af look after, and I helped out a little bit up at Vermilion and Whitefish Point, and um, this year I'm definitely at a bigger and much busier location, so. Uh, we've got four nests here, and I think this is probably one of the busier seasons that's been in Grand Marais for a while. Uh, we have got three nests over on Agate Beach, and two of those, two of those pairs are returning pairs from the last several years. And uh, their nests have already hatched, and so we've got four chicks from each of those nests so running around, so eight chicks all together. So up there, they're about 15 and 11 days old. And um, the, the third nest on Agate Beach is still yet to hatch. That's the due dates on the 14th of this month. But, but we do have another pair nesting east of the sucker, and that nest is actually hatching as we speak. So oh, very exciting, exciting. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're first year birds. Well, they hatched last year, so this is their first time breeding. And so they're kind of, you know, it's pretty cool to watch them figure out how everything, you know, happens. Piping plovers, they have a very specific habitat. So they like wide beaches with cobble. They have to have dunes and actually dunes with uh, not much trees in the background. So mm -hmm. this is perfect for them, Aga Beach, the really wide beach with cobble um, and, the, and the large dunes with the dune grass. And so they they like to nest in the same areas that people often like to to go and you know do their their Recreate. beach thing. So they have some natural predators like merlins and. Uh, Merlins will take the adults, take the chicks, and when the chicks are, are small and vulnerable, uh, ravens and crows and even gulls can take them. But we also have like, you know, human, the human uh, part of that, which dogs tend to be quite an issue here. You know, um, everybody, dog lovers, they want to bring their dog out to the beach, which is fine, you know, but um, when they're not on a leash, they can definitely trample chicks and trample nests and things like that. So this year we have 70 pairs in the Great Lakes and this is only the second time since they've been listed that we've reached 70 pairs. So you know it's it's great that the population is increasing but it's very slow. So, uh, okay so there's four here. Uh, Vermilion has I believe three pairs this year and Whitefish Point only has one. In the, in the total Great Lakes, or actually I should say the total uh, Upper Peninsula, there's Gulliver, where they have four pairs. Port Inland has one. Point of, Point of Shan had, two, uh, had one this year that was unfortunately abandoned because a, a Merlin got an adult. And those eggs were taken to a captive rearing center in Pelston mm. and are probably hatched already, but I would say by now. And I grew up in a little town called Levering just outside of Sheboygan. Well, my, my grandfather and my father are both nature lovers, and and I think they're the ones who kind of got me into it. You know, just being able to, you know, hear a bird sing and say, oh, that's a, you know, an eastern bluebird, or mm -hmm. be able to see a bird. There's 10,000 species of birds, and I could spend my lifetime, you know, finding them and, and learning their mm -hmm. songs and learning about their life and stuff like that. So I just finished with my undergrad in December, mm -hmm. uh, my degrees in wildlife management, and I do want to go to grad school. Birds, working with birds is my passion and conservation for sure, so I think I'll probably end up in a conservation biology program somewhere. You know, I, I really love educating people, mm -hmm. so I'm out the, on the beach all day, and if not, you know, I have, there's a lot of volunteers out there, so. Sure. 
that's probably my favorite part of the day is when somebody comes up and asks me what's going on and to be able to show them a picture or show them through the scope mm -hmm. uh, the adults and the chicks you know and see their face light up like oh that's, sure that really makes my day and to have people say thank you for what you're doing mm -hmm. you know yep what do you think of Grand Marais I think it's beautiful here I couldn't have asked to be in a, a better spot you know I this is I think before I came up here to work, I've only been up here one time, and it's great. I think the people are really down to earth and friendly. It's been my experience. People mm -hmm. are really friendly. Yeah. And, um, just to take advantage of everything around. Yeah. You know, lots of hiking to do, and I saw a bear the other day when I was walking my dog. Oh, did it you? Was like Where about? 1:30 in the afternoon down Allen Street. Oh, okay. And yeah. I was like, well, I maybe won't go down that far. <laughs> but. Well, they're pretty friendly bear.